Hey guys, Ray here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing this all-in-one GrowWatt 3048 ES model. So I've been using this all-in-one inverter for about a month now in my RV. I'll show you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And it's supposed to run without a battery. If you just have cheap solar panels, you can run this thing. So we're going to see what it can run with just solar panels and no battery as well. So let's try Let's test it out. So this is where I have installed the unit. It's really small. I like the look of it as well. So obviously this is in my RV. I've got a combiner box for some solar panels and I've got my uh, server rack battery right here. And I think this is, would also be good in a cabin or a external garage that you need power to, like a wood shop. Now what I like about this is I've got power everywhere I go. It's like a portable power trailer that I can live in. So on the AC out side of things, I've got this plug, the 30 amp plug that I wired in. I can plug my RV in here, but I could also, I'm also gonna use this for critical appliances in my house. If the power goes out, I can pull this around in front of my house, plug my critical appliances in here, my fridges, furnace. I can even run my furnace off this by plugging my furnace in here with an extension cord. But like I was saying earlier, this would be awesome for an outdoor off-grid garage. If the power goes out, your house wouldn't have power, but your garage still would. So in an emergency, you could bring like your fridges and whatnot into your garage and plug them into the outlets. Just get a couple of batteries, some cheap solar panels. And uh, th I think this would, be this would be really nice for that type of setup. So let's check out some of the features of this thing. So the radio to output is 3000 kilowatts. It has a surge of 6000. Solar panel range is 120 to 250 volts, 300 volts open circuit. So it can power loads from the grid as a pass-through, but if you have solar attached, it can run solar at the same time to power all your loads. Ability to work without a battery. There's a Wi-Fi dongle you can plug in to remote monitor the power input and output, and also you can change the settings if you buy the dongle. So this is designed for a 48 volt battery, lithium or lead acid. You can connect a maximum of six units. If you need 240 volts, you'll have to hook two of these together to achieve that. There's a surge capacity, peak efficiency 90%. If you live in an area where the power goes out often, you can hook your critical appliances up to this unit. And if the power goes out, it'll automatically provide power to those units. And this is how much time it takes to uh, transfer that power. So it should be pretty smooth. Maximum solar charge current, 80 amps. So even though this has a minimum voltage of 120 volts DC, I think 180 volts would be better. It wasn't working super well when I had 120 volts hooked up to it. 40 amps of AC charging current. 12 kilograms in weight, which is about 26 pounds. So this is a, so this is a high frequency inverter, meaning it's lighter, but it still has a really good capacity to start loads, which we'll see shortly when I do the load test. Here's an example of how you can set it up can have two of these units and they can share one battery you can have solar panels going to each unit have a Wi-Fi dongle hooked in there monitor the status of each uh, unit and then if you have grid power you can provide grid power to these units as well and then obviously it'll power your loads and so if the grid power goes off it'll be seamless and um, these loads will never notice that the power goes out because we have this backup battery here or if you don't want the grid involved at all, you can just take that, take the grid out and it'll operate just like this. Okay, now for the fun part, let's see what we could run. So this has a rated surge output of 6,000 watts, but I've, in my experience, it can do more. Let's see how much it can do. So I spoke with all my neighbors and gathered up some tools. So this is the biggest inrush item I was able to find. I think this one's like maybe 30 amps of inrush current. I don't know what this one is. But I tested some air compressors. Those were about like 30 amps as well. But this uh, chop saw here that he uses to cut metal, this was 50 amps of inrush current, which is right about 6,000 watts to start. So uh, let's go ahead and try it. So here's the setup I have. Here's the solar panels coming in here, my battery connection. This is the AC output of the unit which I have going to this 30 amp plug and it has, comes around here and also supplies these 30 amp plugs. Now they obviously can't provide 30 amps all at the same time but it's safe because this will shut off if it, if it tries to pull too many amps. So any single plug can provide about 30 amps and here I could provide AC input if 
the sun, if I didn't have solar panels charging my battery, I could provide AC input here. And I could just wire it right there to those bolts. Okay, let's look up the saw. I'm gonna put my meter on here so we can measure how much inrush it actually has. Forty-seven amps inrush current. So this is my RV, and because my RV is plugged into that same system, I can start my air conditioner, and it'll uh, provide a load on the grow watt. So I measured the inrush on my AC when it starts up, and it is also about six thousand watts. So it can start my air conditioner just fine. Get that going. I'm gonna start my electric fridge as well. See how much power that's using. So one thing I really like about this unit is the screen. You can kind of see everything from this one screen. It's a good upgrade from the 48P model of this girl lot. So it looks like I'm using 1.4 kilowatts. My battery is at 91%. I'm not taking any solar in right now. I've got my solar off. This is just running on the battery. Let me see if I can get this a little bit higher. I'm going to turn off my fridge and I'm going to turn on my electric hot water heater. See how much power that uses. My water heater, just turn that on. All right, with the hot water heater running, we're at 2.9 kilowatts, which is 97% capacity, so that's quite a big load. So see if it'll start it at least. It should shut down right away if it's even able to start this, because obviously that will um, push it over the 3,000 uh, watt limit. See if it can handle the surge at least. So no solar, this is just going off the, the one server rack battery. Wow. If you want to do this off a single battery, you really need a high quality battery. I tried with another battery, but it couldn't handle it when the sun wasn't there to provide additional power. I'll put a link on the top of the screen of the battery I'm currently using. So it worked. If I were to keep, uh, if I were to keep that on, it would shut down. But it stayed running. That's cool. So with the AC and the heater running, let's just try and cut this. Cut something. So this is a huge lump, piece of lumber. It's almost twice the thickness of a two x four. Let's see if we can cut it with that running. do it just shut down <laughs> that's okay um, I'm gonna turn the air conditioner off and the hot water heater and then let's we'll I'm gonna see if I can cut some of these boards okay we're back at zero percent let's start this up you know what second thought when I uh, run this saw I'm gonna measure how much energy it uses to um, cut maybe 10 of these boards and then it'll give you an idea of what size battery you would need if you wanted to run a wood shop it's a, a really thick piece of wood, pretty solid. That's one cut. Let's do ten. So according to this, I only, with those 10 cuts, I only consumed one amp hour out of my 48 volt battery. 
I'm just going to do one more cut so you can see how much power this is pulling. So even though it's a high frequency inverter, it looks like it has pretty good startup capacity. It could at least try to start my uh, the metal chop saw when it already had like a 3000 watt load. All right, so we're gonna next, we're gonna use the table saw and we're gonna rip this board right down the center. This is a 10 inch table saw, so it's gonna really push this table saw, but we'll have my son uh, show you the Victron Smart app while I'm cutting. So you can see the data. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. All right, hold it right there while I cut it. Ready? Okay, I had to cut the video short. My table saw is acting up. It's like the blade's tilting when I'm cutting it, so it, it binds up. So yeah, that's the table saw. Hi guys, we're about to post this new vlog, you know? So this is the test I'm really interested in. I wanna, I wanna know how it can function without the battery. So I'm gonna hook, turn my solar on and I'm gonna disconnect my battery. And we're, we'll try and cut some wood just on solar power. So second thought, I don't need to disconnect the battery. All I have to do is turn it off. <laughs> okay, so the battery is totally off. The inverter's off. Let me turn on the solar. So for the solar, I have five 315 watt solar panels. They are all in series. It is four o'clock in the afternoon, so the sun's still pretty high. Let's see how much power we got here. It's not showing me how much solar is coming in because the battery's not connected, so it's not really using the solar right now. But it does show we have 120 volts available. So let's see what we can run. Let's try this first off. No battery, just solar. I don't think it'll work. Yeah. Can't start it. Huh, interesting. Okay, let's try the hair dryer. Couldn't run it on high. Let me try running it on low. Oh, there it goes. Runs it on low. I've got another solar array I'm gonna hook up to this. I'll see if I can get this chop saw working. Okay, so I got another array here of six. These are used, $50 used solar panels, 240 volts. And I've got these all in series, which will give me an array of 2,854 watts in ideal testing conditions. You never get 100% output, so I might get maybe 2,200 watts, I'm guessing. Right now, the sun's kind of a little bit low on the horizon. Let me go uncover these solar panels. Try this again. Okay, that's low. I'm good. 1.5 kilowatts. Okay, let's try the saw. Dang, doesn't start it. Too much of an inrush. Let me just turn on this battery, see how much solar we have coming in. So it looks like at 4.30 in the afternoon we have about 2,000 watts. So if I remember right, this thing has a startup inrush current of 20 amps, which is 2,400 watts. And I didn't have that much solar power coming in here. I wish the somehow the solar panels would could like charge the capacitors to kind of uh, handle some of that inrush current. So running without a solar panel doesn't work super good. I think I saw another YouTube video where um, in, someone in Florida had one of these set up 
and they had a bunch of solar panels on their awning and then so when the sun would come out it had enough power to like run the air conditioner in their window help cool down the house when the sun's out fully and they didn't have a battery probably better just have a battery so the main pros and cons of this I guess a pro and a con is the pro is that it does accept a higher voltage for uh, solar panels so that's nice but on the con it doesn't accept the lower voltage if you have a smaller solar array it's probably not going to work for you you have to have at least like 180 uh, volts open circuit for this thing to work like reliably and I've got uh, 180 volts open circuit on the roof of the RV right now I was kind of concerned that it wasn't going to uh, accept any really any power from shade that was one of my main concerns when I bought this. But I just got back from an RV trip. We went like four days down to Yuba Reservoir and there's storms for like two, two and a half, three days. Other people were using my RV to like power their fridges and, and stuff. I was still able to get a lot of power even when, even when I had shade, so that's good. But yeah, this does accept, there's a network cable that goes to my battery so I can have closed loop communication. So it's a little bit safer. So I've got a lot of cool projects coming up. I'm going to hook this up to my house to save power on, on my electrical bill. I'm still working through the details on how to do that. If you have any suggestions, I'd appreciate any comments you guys have. But if you want a more thorough walkthrough of this, I'll put a link in the description of Inns Solar Projects. He does a really good walkthrough of this. But thanks a lot. See ya. Here's the garden. It's growing. Da, da, da.